So this has been sent in because it's apparently overheating and the Joy-Cons don't connect. So that means that we have an issue with the fan MOSFET. So we're going to do a really quick fix on this. And it's going to be good. So it's going to be a really quick fix. So there's a little known trick that I invented called zap this thing with power on the fan connector and it will suddenly start working again. I've lost one of my screwdrivers, there it is. Zap it, yep. So what I'm gonna do, uh, well, first of all, let's just see what goes on when I hook some Joy-Cons up to this. They do not work. The Joy-Cons do not work. Right, let's just uh, connect a couple more up just to double check them. Not connecting. Not connecting. Yeah, so Joy-Cons are not connecting at all. And by the look of it, it's also, well, apparently got a fan issue according to the, uh, the Tiki. I'll show you that in a second. But normally when that happens, where you've got an issue with the fan and the Joy-Cons connecting, or Joy-Cons charging, one of the two. So if the Joy-Cons are either not charging or not connecting, then you've normally got an issue with the fan MOSFET. And the reason that the two, two issues are related is because they both use the same MOSFET. So they use the same MOSFET for the fan power and also for charging Joy-Cons. So if you get any kind of issue with the Joy-Cons, then you've usually got a fan issue at the same time. What causes effect to need a zap? Um, it fails open, so obviously, as most of us will probably know, a MOSFET basically is a switch, and it switches on and off really, really fast, and that regulates power. But sometimes they just suddenly fail open. So the file in the open open position doesn't allow current to pass through, and yeah, suddenly you've got no Joy Cons connecting or no Joy Cons charging and no fan spin. So as you can see here, we don't have a fan spinning. Shorts on source. No, it just fails open circuit. It just fails open line. It's usually down to. Either you're plugging in a bad Joy-Con, or you've got some sort of liquid damage on the Joy-Con rails. Or you could have a bad fan, it could be down to a bad fan, but that's very unlikely. So I'm going to check the Joy-Con rails themselves. That one seems okay. And that one... Seems okay, but it is split. Slightly. So that Joy-Con rail actually technically, oh no, actually, are they not? no, they're not split. They're meant to be like that. Never mind. All right. Well, the Joy-Con rails themselves, the contacts are fine. Um, as you can see, it's not, like the fan's not spinning. So if I take my hot air and I'll just deliberately overheat this, by warming up warming up the heat sink there you go yeah so what should be happening right now is that fan should be kicking in and it should be going brrr and it's not so that's just telling me that there's an issue with the fan MOSFET because the fan moves freely and if it was just a fan that had failed, then we would normally get power to the Joy-Cons at least. If we just go to the fan, as you can see, that does move freely. 
So that's absolutely fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bench power supply. I need to set that back up, so bear with me a second. But I'm going to get my bench power supply, and I'm just going to inject 3 volts into the fan. And what that will do is basically force power through the MOSFET and basically wake it up. That's going to be the plan. So it's basically going to wake the MOSFET up and say, Oi, get your ass into gear. And then it should start working again. It will whack 12 volt through it like a real man. <laughs> so yeah, that injecting 3 volts should get it working, working again. So I'm going to pop one probe on ground. I've got my bench supply set at 3 volts. Hmm, is this... There we go. You see that magic smoke come out? So, it lets out a little bit of magic smoke, and all of a sudden, that MOSFET is now spinning. Uh, that fan is now spinning. The screen wasn't active, which is why it didn't come on when I actually hit it the first time. But as soon as I've activated the screen, it's come on. So that fan's just started spinning after injecting three volts. And now, we have cooling again. And that's literally all I've done, is just whacked it with a couple of volts. Well, with three volts. And boom, that works. And boom, that works. Job done. That's how we do it. And the good thing is I get to, pay, get to charge a £40 bench fee for that. There's nothing wrong with the MOSFET. There's nothing at all wrong with the MOSFET. It just fails open. It just literally doesn't work until you inject voltage. And now it's not going to overheat anymore. And I have never in the past three years since I actually figured this out... So the way I figured this out, I should probably mention this, but the way I figured this out wasn't because I was trying to botch anything or anything like that. I wanted to test the fan, and the only way I could keep the fan ribbon still was to do it while it was connected to the board. So I've injected voltage into the fan through the board, and it just fired back into life. And that's how I figured out how to do this. What was the magic smoke from? Um, I don't actually know where it comes from. It just releases a little bit of magic smoke from the other side of the board for some weird reason. It does it every single time. Every single time. But I've never had one come back, ever. No 40 quid for you, mate. If this happens to my switch, I'll do it myself. Oh, damn it. <laughs> But yeah, that's a good thing. Like you get to charge a forty quid bench fee because it's not—it's not the repair you're paying for. It's, it's knowledge. It's all about the knowledge. Um, but yeah, this all this all work now, and I've never had one come back reporting an issue afterwards. And uh, yeah, it's an easy, really, really simple fix. You just made me a quick sixty bucks. Nice, awesome, mate. Yeah, the, this is probably one of the fastest repairs you can do on a switch, to be honest. Just because it's just so easy to do them. Like, anyone can do it. Right. Fastest way to make money. Give me 100 of these a day and I'll do them all. <laughs> I'll, I'll do 100 in a day, literally. Yep, Joy-Cons are charging. Let's just make sure we've got no damage to the actual... Joy-Cons, or rather the Joy-Con rails, just keep it, giving it a wiggle. It takes more time to disassemble, it really does. It really does, mate. Just literally get your bench power supply, one probe on ground, zip, straight down all of the connect, all of the contacts, and it's done. Thumbnail has, thumbnail has Duracell bunny in it, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. That'll do, mate. Let's turn this off. And I'll, uh, I'll give it a full test before it goes back out. These are not going out for a week, so I'm happy with that. Job done. A little bit of voltage zapping. Duracell bunny fixes switch. Fuck that, I'm taking the credit for this. 
<laughs> but yeah, the ticket the ticket said overheating and Joy Cons not connecting slash losing connection. So yeah, that's what made me realise straight away that it was a MOSFET issue. The fact that the two the two things are linked, like if you if you've got two issues that are um, that present itself together and you already know that they share the same circuit, which is exactly why the fan turns on when you hook up your Joy-Cons. Um, but if you've got two issues like that and you know that they're both linked, then it, it can only be one thing, really, and that's the MOSFET. Yeah, they're not all this easy. Not all repairs are this easy, but that is literally a five-minute job. I could probably do 100 of them in a day. Not even joking. Well, probably not 100, but I could probably do at least 30 of them in a day. But, yeah, job done. Happy days. On to the next one.